to all pastors, seminarians, and congregation members who have joined for a testimony on prophecy and fulfillment of Revelation, God's New Covenant, Shincheonji Online Seminar. It's nice to meet you. I am Instructor Kang Chang-hoon, your presider for today. First of all, I would like to thank everyone for coming to the Shincheonji Online Seminar today. Today's online seminar, Testimony on Prophecy and Fulfillment of Revelation, God's New Covenant, is being broadcast all over the world in several languages. In this seminar, you will receive the testimony on the prophecy and fulfilled realities of the book of Revelation, which is the conclusion of the Bible that all believers must absolutely know. So I hope that through this time, everyone listening will receive abundant grace and perception. We will first pray together and then begin the seminar. Father God, you who are our creator and whom we are so thankful to for allowing an online seminar today, testimony on prophecy and fulfillment of revelation, God's new covenant, so that all pastors and seminarians on the earth can receive the testimony of this last work that you have accomplished we truly want to thank you. God, you have delivered the word to the world through a chosen shepherd in each era. And now, as the book of Revelation has been fulfilled and all the realities have appeared, for using Chairman Lee Man Hee of Shincheonji Church of Jesus, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony, the witness who saw and heard all the events to testify through the online seminars without adding or subtracting so that all can hear the testimony clearly. We want to thank you once again. Father God, as you wrote in the Bible, those who have ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And then today, at this moment, for the many pastors, seminarians, and church members who are participating in the online seminar, won't you please grant ears to hear, hearts to understand, and eyes to see, so that we can all be led together in your final work. As we start now, we earnestly ask that you will be with us during this time until the end, and we pray in the name of Jesus, who is life. Amen. This seminar is being conducted with strict adherence to COVID-19 guidelines and social distancing regulations. Now, when you receive the testimony on the prophecy and fulfillment of the Book of Revelation, I hope that you will gain great understanding and that it will be a valuable time in which the word is clearly unraveled. We will have the tribe leader of Seoul James tribe who will deliver the word on Revelation chapter 19. God's new covenant, Revelation's prophecy and fulfillment, testimony seminar, to those who are in attendance, all pastors, congregation members, and family members of the Global Village, greetings to you. Always, may God's great grace and love be filled in all of you. First, I pray this in Jesus' name. I have been chosen in the name of Jesus' disciple James. I am the tribe leader of Seoul James tribe, Yu Yongju. Everyone, last time, did you learn the words of Revelation chapter 18 well? Today at this time, we'll go over the words of Revelation chapter 19 and the fulfillment, meaning the physical entities that have appeared according to those very words. So as we listen to these words of testimony, we have to open wide the doors of our hearts, perceive this completely, seal it in our hearts, so that we can achieve our hope of the promised kingdom and eternal life. The title of Revelation chapter 19 is The Spirit and Flesh of the Wedding Banquet of the Lamb. The location of the events is the wedding banquet of the Lamb. 
this place appeared in reality. In Revelation chapter 15, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony. And the time of the fulfillment is, after the demons, nation, Babylon, and the prostitute are judged. Revelation chapter 18 and 19 are comparative chapters. Revelation chapter 18, as we learned previously, makes known the marriage of the devil. Whereas what we learned today, Revelation chapter 19, makes known the marriage with Jesus. So inside of Revelation, like this, there are many comparative chapters that we looked at previously. For example, in Revelation chapter 6 and 7 are comparative chapters. Revelation chapter 13 and 14 are also comparative chapters. So, to give you a brief summary of Revelation chapter 19 first, in Revelation chapter 16, 17, and 18, God's oxen and fattened cattle were butchered, and the wedding banquet of the Lamb was prepared. After this, the birds flying in midair and the guests are gathered to eat and have their fill. Let's see what it says in Revelation chapter 19, verse 1 to 6, in one voice. After this, I heard what sounded like the roar of a great multitude in heaven shouting, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and power belong to our God. For true and just are his judgments. He has condemned the great prostitute who corrupted the earth by her adulteries. He has avenged on her the blood of his servants. And again they shouted, Hallelujah! The smoke from her goes up forever and ever. The twenty-four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God, who was seated on the throne. And they cried, Amen! Hallelujah! Then a voice from the throne came, saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, you who fear him, both small and great. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters, and like a loud peal of thunder, shouting, Hallelujah, for our Lord God Almighty reigns. Yeah, so we saw verse 1 to 6, showing a great multitude in spirit and flesh, returning thanks and glory. But before we look into this, we see that it says, I heard, right? This individual called I, at the time when Revelation was seen as a vision and recorded, there was approximately 2,000 years ago, it was Jesus' disciple John. However, today is the era of the testimony of Revelation's fulfillment. So we have to perceive clearly that this is New John. And in the beginning it says, after this. Isn't that so? So, the after this that is shown here, it is referring to the previous chapter, the events of Revelation chapter 18. And this shows that the events of Revelation chapter 18 must fulfill in order for the events of Revelation chapter 19 to fulfill. This is what it makes known. So, the events of Revelation chapter 18 shows the kingdom of demons, Babylon, and the prostitute are judged, and the marriage with the devil has come to an end, and we learned this very well previously in the last seminar. After this, there is a great multitude gathered in heaven, isn't that so? And the reality of who they are is those who perceived the words of Revelation and the events and came out before God. In Revelation chapter 17, verse 14, it says they are the called chosen 
followers who overcome. And in Revelation chapter 18, verse 4, it says, Come out of her, my people. Then from where and to where are they called out? Yes, that is, from the home of demons, Babylon, to the temple of the tabernacle testimony where God and Jesus are found. So come out to there. So this introduces who they are. And like this, those who came before God, a multitude in heaven, they shout, Hallelujah, salvation, glory, and power belong to our God. Isn't that so? And the reason why they are shouting like this is because the Lamb, Jesus, has fought the devil, overcame, and saved these individuals from the home of demons, Babylon, called them out and saved them. That's why those who are saved in great gratitude return thanks and glory to our Father God. Isn't that right? And it says, God's judgment is true and just. Isn't that so? And the reason is because God, He judges everyone according to their deeds as written in the Bible justly and righteously. And in John chapter 12, verse 48, it says, The words I spoke will condemn him at the last day. Doesn't it say so? And in Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 to 15, it says, When the dead are judged, the books are opened. Isn't it recorded like that? Similarly, we can see that everyone is judged according to their deeds, as recorded in the Bible. And because God judges like this, God's judgment is truly true and just and righteous. Isn't that so? And they also shout that God, He reigns. Isn't that right? And this is a sound that makes known God's victory and the victory and salvation of the saints. How important this is, and very important this is, we must perceive it at the time. After the sin of Adam, for approximately 6,000 years, this entire world was governed by Satan, the devil. And in Revelation chapter 18, it says, All nations is controlled by Satan, the devil. And in Reve until the point of Revelation chapter 18, it was the era of the devil's reign. However, from the point of Revelation chapter 19, it is who? Our God who reigns. This is work of salvation. And that's what Revelation chapter 19 makes known. Therefore, God's people must eagerly and eagerly desire for Revelation chapter 19 to fulfill. It's very natural for us to hope in this, isn't it so? In Revelation chapter 18, the home of demons, Babylon, has come to an end. And God, He begins to reign in this era of Revelation chapter 19. And this is what is being shouted and made known, isn't it so? Now let's see what it says in verse 7 to 10. Let's read it in one voice. Let us rejoice and be glad and give Him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come, and His bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of the saints. Then the angel said to me, Write, Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, These are the true words of God. At this, I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, Do not do it. I am a fellow servant with you and with your brothers who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Amen. Yes, so we saw what it says in verse 7 to 10 regarding the wedding 
wedding of the Lamb and the heaven's wedding supper. So, the wedding of the Lamb has come. What is the wedding of the Lamb? It means to make a promise to not marry any other God or spirit than Jesus. Then before this wedding, in Revelation chapter 18, we can see how all nations have married the devil. And we learned this very well in the last seminar. And when we listen to these words, we have to think, what do these words and I have to do with one another? We have to examine that, isn't it so? So all nations have married the devil, it says. Then everyone, are you included inside of all nations or are you outside of all nations? And also, it says all nations have married the devil. Then have I married the devil? I need to see and examine through the words of the Bible. Perceive this so that I can act according to God's will as a wise family member of God. The bride of the Lamb has made herself ready. So, who is the bridegroom here? The bridegroom is Jesus, who is the Lamb. And we learned this multiple times. What about the bride who has made herself ready? It is talking about the promised pastor of the New Testament, New John, whom Jesus is one with. And we see this in Revelation chapter 22, verse 17, that it says, it is the spirit and the bride, right? Then Jesus, who is in spirit, is like a bridegroom. And new John, whom Jesus is one with, is in flesh. Therefore, he is like the bride. And they make these words known. And when it says spiritual marriage, what is the spiritual marriage? Is bridegroom in spirit and bride in flesh. They become one and work together. Like it says in Hosea chapter 2, verse 19 to 20, that God will betroth an individual in the same logic. So to organize this one more time, it is a spiritual marriage and the spirits make up the bridegroom and flesh are the brides and they become one together. And that is what? Spiritual marriage spoken of in the Bible. And, in, and regarding the wedding banquet of the Lamb and the wedding supper of the Lamb, let's look at this in greater detail. In Matthew chapter 22, verse 1 to 14, it shows that there was a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. It is a parable recorded there. And here, who is the king? It is God. And who is the son? It is Jesus. Then God prepared a wedding banquet for his son, Jesus. And he made this known in a parable. Like this, after the wedding banquet is prepared, he sends his servants to invite the people. However, those that are invited, they refuse to come, he says. Everyone, why does, why do those who are invited to the wedding banquet of the Lamb refuse to come? Through the Bible, we must examine the state of my own faith walk, perceive this, so that we are those who can have the qualifications to enter the wedding banquet of the Lamb. Isn't that so? And because they refuse to come, God butchers my oxen, meaning God's oxen, and the fattened cattle. He prepares all things and makes, a, makes known that there will be a wedding banquet of the Lamb, like this in Matthew chapter 22, verse 1 to 14. Then there's something that's very important for us to perceive here. It is 
what is the very important evidence that allows us to find the wedding banquet of the Lamb. This evidence is God's oxen and fattened cattle. This is not physical oxen or physical cattle that is butchered that the wedding of the kingdom of heaven opens. Oxen here, like it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 9 to 10, it is talking about God's worker, meaning God's pastor, is referred to as what? Figuratively like an oxen. Just like that, because it says God's oxen, we can see that this used to be God's pastor. However, abandoned God and left, the, the reality is the betrayers. And when it says fattened cattle, there are those who devour and destroy God's people that are like sheep. So the destroyers are the reality of the fattened cattle. So, even if someone desires to go to the wedding banquet of the Lamb, if they, don't, if they do not know what is God's oxen and what is the fattened cattle, then one will not be able to find the wedding banquet of the Lamb, right? Then, through the words of testimony of Revelation, I hope that we are those who find the find God's oxen and fattened cattle and participate in the wedding banquet of the Lamb as God's family. Like this, we can see uh, the location of the wedding banquet is the place where God and Jesus are found in Revelation chapter 15, verse 5. The temple of the tabernacle of the testimony is the reality of the wedding banquet. Then, in order to enter into the wedding banquet, there are things that we must prepare that we can see through the Bible. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 to 13, it talks about how we must prepare lamp and oil. So there are 10 virgins who go out to meet the bridegroom. Wise virgins prepare their lamp and oil and met the bridegroom. However, foolish virgins, they did not have oil. They were kicked outside into the darkness. And that's what Matthew chapter 25 makes known. Then everyone, do you know what this lamp and oil is? Also, have you prepared lamp and enough oil? Let's find out the reality of this lamp and oil in the Bible. In Psalms 119, 105, it talks about how the Lord's words are a lamp to my feet and a light from my path. Therefore, lamp is referring to the words of the Bible. Isn't it so? And when we say oil, in the tabernacle of Moses, what gave light to a lamp is olive oil. And we can see this in Leviticus chapter 24, verse 1 to 2. So, the reality of olive oil is, in Revelation chapter 11, verse 4, it says the witness there is figuratively like an olive tree. Therefore, the reality of olive oil is the word of testimony of a witness. And this oil is the words of revelation and the testimony of the physical fulfillment of the words of revelation, right? And in Matthew chapter 22, verse 11 to 14, it talks about how we must also prepare wedding clothes. And in this wedding banquet, there are many people that are invited. However, they're finding one, finding a man there without wedding clothes. He was thrown outside into the darkness where there was weeping and gnashing of teeth. So this wedding banquet, this wedding clothes, and we can see this in Revelation chapter 19, verse 8. It is fine linen given and this fine linen stood for the righteous acts of the saints, right? 
So in Revelation chapter 18, we can see all nations have married the devil and they're made into the image and likeness of the devil. They have become corrupted. Then with that kind of corrupted faith walk, one cannot participate in the wedding banquet of the Lamb, of this kingdom of heaven. Then it, just like it says in Revelation chapter 22, flowing from the throne of God in Jesus, the words of life as clear as crystal, one must wash the robes of their hearts to participate in the wedding banquet of the Lamb. I hope that we can perceive this at this time. Then to organize one more time, in order to enter into the wedding banquet, one must prepare lamp, oil, and wedding clothes. Isn't that so? And in Matthew chapter 22, verse 14, it says there are many who are invited to the wedding banquet of the Lamb, but only a few are chosen. These are very fearful words for us, isn't it so? Then through the words of the testimony of Revelation, what is made known to all over the world right now is that the wedding banquet of the Lamb has been prepared. And these words of testimony is the invitation to the wedding banquet of the Lamb. Everyone, after listening to this invitation, what kind of person would you become? Do you want to become someone who refuses to come? Or are you, do you want to be someone who holds in contempt and kills those who invite? Or persecute, curse, and insult those who invite you to the wedding banquet of the Lamb? No, we must take the invitation, be chosen, and participate in the wedding banquet of the Lamb as the family members of heaven. At this time, let's see, regarding the advocate of spirit and flesh, of the one who received Jesus' testimony. So, the entire events of Revelation which Jesus fulfilled, an angel is making this known to John, yes? An angel is referred to as the spirit of advocate. Therefore, this angel who is advocate in spirit is what? an advocate in spirit. So, the promised pastor of the New Testament, New John, is shown all things. The New John, who sees and hears all this through an angel, is the promised pastor whom Jesus is with. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 8, it says, I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And in Revelation chapter 22, verse 16, it says, I, Jesus has sent his messenger to the churches to give the testimony of the entire events of Revelation. It's a promise. Therefore, angel is an advocate in spirit. So Jesus is advocate in spirit. And the and new John, the promised pastor whom Jesus is one with, becomes an advocate in flesh who testifies to the fulfillment of the entire events of Revelation. Now, let's see what it says in verse 11 to 16. Ready? Again, it says, I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse, whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice, he judges and makes war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on, his, on him that no one knows, but he himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, bright and clean. Out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of the God Almighty. On his robe, and on his thigh he has this name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. Yes, in verse 11 to 16, shows a white horse, rider on a white horse, and a sharp double-edged sword. 
So there is a white horse and a rider. And regarding this, like we studied in Revelation chapter 6, we learned this in great detail already. Do you remember those words that you learned? The rider on the horse is referring to spirit, whereas the spirit is using this flesh. The flesh is like a horse, isn't it so? Like this, in Revelation chapter 19, there is a rider on a white horse. And in verse 16, on his robe and on his thigh, his name is written, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Isn't that right? Who is the King of kings and the Lord of lords? Everyone, you can perceive this, you know this. Who is this? The King of kings and the Lord of lords. It is Jesus. And Jesus is riding and working on a white horse. It is referring to Jesus as advocate, meaning the promised pastor of the New Testament. It is New John. So Jesus is riding on a horse. And New John, whom Jesus is one with, is Jesus is using him as a tool, using him as a horse. I hope that we can understand this. And those who are following Jesus, there are riders on white horses, and there are also white horses. The riders on the white horses is referring to thousands upon thousands, ten thousands upon ten thousand armies, angels of the army of heaven. And the white horses are referring to the saints who have become one with him overcomes. So Jesus is working with new John as his horse. And the angels are using the people, God's people, who have become one with, one overcomes. Isn't that right? And Jesus is dressed in a robe dipped in blood. This robe dipped in blood is referring to Jesus' martyrdom and also God's word that is like blood. And Jesus has a sharp sword and with an iron scepter, he will strike down the nations. Then, the sharp sword and iron scepter that we see here, we can see this in Revelation chapter 1, verse 16, that from Jesus' mouth comes a sharp double-edged sword. And in Revelation chapter 2, verse 26 to 27, with an iron scepter, he will rule over all nations. Therefore, a sharp sword and iron scepter are referring to the words of judgment. Now let's see God's army and the devil's army. So God's army and the devil's army. God's army, like we saw previously, it's talking about Jesus the Lamb. And there are thousands upon thousands of army of white horses following Jesus. And this army of white horses, it is the army of spirit and flesh of the kingdom of heaven. In contrast, the devil's army, we see this in Revelation chapter 9. It's 200 million mounted troops. And in Revelation chapter 9, we saw the devil's army. They're equipped with breastplates. And out of their mouth come fire, smoke, and sulfur, and kill a third of mankind. So no matter how much the word of truth is given to them, their spirit and their heart is so evil that like a breastplate, they do not listen to God's words. So this is the devil's army. Everyone, listening to the words of t Revelation, if these words are truth, then we must be those who believe in these words. Isn't that so? We must not be like the devil's army who put on a breastplate and do not believe. 
then we can see who they belong to. And in Revelation chapter 18, the, dev the devil's army is referred to as the home of demons, Babylon, which deceived all nations. So we can see how powerful the devil's army is, isn't that so? However, today we learn in Revelation chapter 19 that there is an army of white horses upon thousands upon thousands of angels that fight the devil's army and are victorious. So this is a very strong, powerful army of heaven of white horses. Like this, the devil's army have, are ruling over the all nations and fighting them and to overcome them. We must have a powerful weapon in order to overcome them, meaning with faith we have to be victorious in this war, isn't it so? Even in this world, in order to win a war, there's a very strong training and weapon. Then God's army and, Sat and Satan's army, they fight in a spiritual war, then we must need a greater and more powerful training and weapon, isn't it so? Then the words of revelation that is being testified today, we must perceive it completely, seal it in our hearts, be fully equipped so that we can fight the devil's army and be those that are victorious as the army of heaven. Like it says in Ephesians chapter 6, in order for us in order for us to take our stand against the devil's schemes, we have to put on the full armor of God. So we have to be fully equipped with the words of Revelation, fight the devil and overcome. And just like it says in Revelation chapter 20, lock up Satan the devil in an abyss and with God and with Jesus, eternally return glory of victory as a powerful army of white horses. At this time, let's see what it says in verse 17 to 22. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, who cried in a loud voice to all the birds flying in mid-air, Come, gather together for the great supper of God, so that you may eat the flesh of kings, generals, and mighty men, of horses and their riders, and the flesh of all people, free and slave, small and great. Then I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gather together to make war against the rider on the horse and his army. But the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who had performed the miraculous signs on his behalf. With these signs he had deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. The two of them were thrown alive into the fire lake of burning sulfur. The rest of them were killed with the sword that came out of the mouth of the rider on the horse, and of the birds gorged themselves on their flesh. Amen. So in verse 17 to 21, we see the birds flying in mid-air and the meat of the beast. So in verse 17, we saw how an angel is standing in the sun. And this angel standing in the sun, it does not mean that he is standing in the sun, in the sky, the physical sun, but it is like the sun. The promised pastor who gives light, the word of truth, and is working together with him. Therefore, this angel is calling out to all the birds flying in midair, come gather together for the great supper of God. Then let's find out what these birds flying in the midair are. When we say birds that are flying in midair, it is not talking about physical birds up in the natural sky. It is talking about in Matthew chapter 3, verse 16, how a Holy Spirit is like a dove. And in Matthew chapter 13, verse 31 to 32, 
It shows how a mustard seed was sown, and it grew to be a large tree. And the birds came and perched on its branches, right? And this tree is referred to as a tree of heaven. So the birds that come perch in the tree of heaven, it is talking about God's spirit. So when it says the birds flying in midair, it is talking about the souls of the murders. Because we say this is the wedding banquet of the Lamb, it is the souls of the murders that come like a bridegroom to participate and are invited to the wedding banquet of the Lamb. So gathering the birds flying in midair to the wedding, to the great, when it, uh, the great supper of God means to invite the souls of the murders. This angel is inviting the souls of the murders to the wedding banquet of the Lamb. And just like it is fulfilled in heaven, it must also be fulfilled on earth. Just like that, angel, just like how an angel gathered the souls of the murders in the spiritual world, on this earth, it is who? Him who overcomes. The promised pastor of the New Testament that gathers the saints on this earth to the wedding banquet of the Lamb. These saints are those who have flesh. So they are like a bride. I hope that we can perceive this together at this time. So the Revelation, Revelation chapter 19 was titled The Wedding Banquet of the Lamb of Spirit and Flesh, correct? Then the words that are being testified like this is your invitation to the wedding banquet of the Lamb. Just like it says in Matthew chapter 22, those, there are many who are invited, but a few are chosen. So, in the wedding banquet of the Lamb, in this invitation, do not be those who decline this invitation, but accept the invitation and meet Jesus the bridegroom and eternally participate in the wedding banquet of the Lamb as wise versions of God's family. God's family. And what is the flesh that we eat here, the meat that we eat. In verse 18, it talks about the flesh of the kings, generals, mighty men, horses, and their riders. And furthermore, the flesh of all people, free and slave, small and great. It is the flesh and the meat of all people, isn't it so? Then what is who are the kings, the generals, the, the mighty men, horses and riders? It is referring to the group of destruction and those who abandoned and left God, the betrayers. Do you understand? So everyone, we saw regarding the wedding supper of the Lamb, that in the wedding banquet of the Lamb, what it was the evidence that this is the wedding banquet? There are two things. Do you remember? Yes, that is what? God's oxen and fattened cattle. In Matthew chapter 22, verse 4, we saw. So like this, God's oxen and fattened cattle the destroyers, the betrayers and the destroyers or what? The reality of the flesh or this meat that is eaten in the great supper of God. And regarding this in Ezekiel chapter 39, verse 17 to 19, it was promised and prophesied there too that the chosen people of Israel were destroyed by Gag and Magog. And after God judges them, on the Mount of Israel was prepared a great banquet. And there we will eat flesh and drink blood. And the reality of this promise 
was, is found in Revelation chapter 19. I hope that we can perceive this at this time. Then, who are the kings, the generals, mighty men, horses, and riders? What does it mean to eat their flesh? Let's find out. It's not to eat the physical flesh of oxen and fattened cattle. Now we know this clearly, isn't it so? What does it mean to eat their flesh? It means to listen to the words of the testimony of the judgment of the betrayers and the destroyers. The betrayers are judged and the destroyers are judged. And the word of testimony, hearing those words of testimony, it's what? Equivalent to eating their flesh. And in verse 19, it talks about that there are what? The kings, the generals, the mighty men, horses and riders. This is the army of the devil that we saw. And the... And the rider on the horse and his army is, refer is referring to the army of white horses of heaven. And God, in Revelation chapter 18, directly judges the prostitute with fire. And the defeated soldiers of Babylon are all judged by the army of white horses that we see in the main reference. So through this war, the beast and the false prophet are captured and thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. Then this beast and the false prophet in Revelation chapter 13, we can see that this beast is the beast of the sea, a beast with seven heads and ten horns. Isn't that so? Meaning, the one who destroyed God's tabernacle, the destroyers are the beast, beast of the sea. And the false prophet here is referring to, in Revelation chapter 13, the beast of the earth. And this beast has a name, 666. And regarding this, we learned this very well when we went over Revelation chapter 13. And lastly, in verse 21, it says, The rest of them were killed by the sword that came out of the mouth of the rider on the horse, and all the birds gorged themselves on their flesh, right? So what does it mean to gorge themselves on the flesh? It's not physical flesh that they ate, meaning they heard the words of testimony of the judgment of the betrayers and the destroyers. And with that news, their hearts were filled with gratitude and they're very content. So, let's summarize Revelation chapter 19 concisely once again. Conclusion. So, the banquet of the kingdom of heaven. So, in order to enter, participate in the wedding banquet of the Lamb, there are qualifications, right? What are these qualifications? We must find God's oxen, meaning the betrayers, and the fattened cattle, the destroyers, and they're butchered in the wedding banquet of the Lamb. So, we must find this place, isn't this so? We have to find this wedding banquet so that we can participate in it and meet our bridegroom as wise virgins. And furthermore, it's not just to find the wedding banquet that one participates in it. There are three things that one must prepare. Wasn't that so? Lamp and oil and wedding clothes. To what? To participate in the wedding banquet of the Lamb, meaning the wedding banquet of heaven. Now, in order to prepare all of this, we must absolutely meet the Him who overcomes, the promised pastor of the New Testament. And here, the words of Revelation and its fulfillment. Therefore, if one does not meet the promised pastor of the New Testament, they cannot prepare their lamp, oil, and wedding clothes. So let's perceive that. And today, 
the one who saw and heard revelation and testifies to it, the one who overcomes the promised pastor of the New Testament, let's meet him, prepare our lamp, oil, and wedding clothes, and participate in the wedding banquet of the Lamb as the family members of the kingdom of heaven. So right now, many pastors worldwide are signing MOU with Shincheonji Church of Jesus. And they're requesting for a curriculum that they can teach. And they're asking for lecturers who can lecture to be sent to their regions. And this is a marvelous work of God. And this is the power of Jesus. Isn't that so? Next time, we will look at the words of Revelation chapter 20. In Revelation chapter 20, the spirit and flesh of those who participated in the wedding banquet of the Lamb in Revelation chapter 19 partake in the first resurrection where they reign for a thousand years together with Christ. So this glory of partaking in the first resurrection is explained in Revelation chapter 20. So let's make sure that all, none of us miss it, but all of us receive the testimony of Revelation chapter 20 so that we can also partake in the glory of first resurrection. So right now, the entire world is becoming one with these words of Revelation. According to the words of prophecy of Revelation, which has never happened before, it has been fulfilled, and we're looking at it. So, all family members of this global village, the words of Revelation is the true food that we must eat in today's era. Please perceive it and receive the testimony of the promised pastor of the New Testament, New John, the chairman, Lee Man Hee, of Shincheonji Church of Jesus. Listen to this carefully, perceive it, and be sealed with it so that we can all together participate in the wedding banquet of the Lamb as a family of the kingdom of heaven. We are one inside of God and Jesus and the Word. We are one. Yes, all together, let's pray. Father God, whom we are truly thankful and thankful for, we, you've allowed to us God's new covenant, the testimony on prophecy and fulfillment of Revelation, and you've led us to Revelation chapter 19. For your grace and love, we thank you. Through the words of testimony that is given to us today, may all pastors and the church members worldwide and the family members of the global village perceive your precious words our Father God, will you add upon us wisdom and understanding. Help us to perceive it and to believe it. And just like it says in Revelation chapter 19, be those who can participate in the wedding banquet of the Lamb as wise virgins and receive the blessing of heaven and eternal life. So will you give upon us grace. May all of us perceive these words. May none of us be dressed in a breastplate that listen to these words but not able to acknowledge it but instead persecute and oppose or curse may not none of us do so may all of us perceive these words so that we can live with you eternally in the promised kingdom with you and jesus and receive heaven and eternal life as your family members we pray in the name of our lord jesus amen this is regarding the dragon who is locked in the abyss. The chain that seizes the dragon. Aren't you curious about this too? What is the first resurrection and who are the ones who participate in it? Now don't you want to become the reality of this first resurrection? So what should we do to receive this precious blessing? As it says, those who have done good will rise to live and those who have done evil will rise to be condemned. Now all these spirits will be judged and divided into eternal life and eternal punishment. Yes, did you receive the testimony regarding Revelation chapter 19? Well, 
I pray in the name of the Lord that everyone can perceive well, put our hope in the wedding banquet of the Lamb, and come to the location of its reality to be those who are truly blessed by God. Next time, at 10 a.m., the same time as today, the tribe leader of the tribe of Busan James will testify regarding Revelation chapter 20. We hope that you will attend and come to understand God's precious will and promises. In addition to the words of revelation that you heard today, if you have more questions or inquiries about Shincheonji Church and its doctrine, please contact the representative number of each tribe shown on the screen. Now, we will pray the prayer Jesus taught us and end our time. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and power and glory forever and ever. Amen. This concludes the Shincheonji Online Seminar, Testimony on Prophecy and Fulfillment of Revelation, God's New Covenant. Thank you to everyone who joined us.